Hi everyone. Again, welcome to this webinar of the Beginner's Corner. We are going to talk a bit today about um, divergences. Hello, Annie <laughs> and Adinda and Guy. And few of us today, since Friday afternoon, everybody's so tired. Uh, we are going to, and um, this time our vacations may also be affecting the market. So anyway, let's start talking a bit about today's subject, okay? Let me show you the small presentation which we are going to start with. And after that, we are going to uh, answer any kind of questions you may have, okay? Uh, I know that despite its common name among forex traders and investors, divergences are considered a hard tool to use in the forex market. Unless we know a couple of simple rules that I attempt to tell you today, right? So first, let's start saying what a divergence is. The fact is that we say that we have a divergence when the price of a certain currency pair moves in opposite direction to its same indicator, right? Uh, indicators keeps rising when the price keeps falling. On the contrary, indicators fall lower to lower levels while price continues rising, right? This kind of divergence, the differences among the indicator and price action, right? can show us either of two different things about the market and the price action. They can show you either that the current trend is ready to change and we are up, nearing a reversal point, or on the contrary, that the trend may continue, right? We are going to discuss this a bit uh, more detail in a few seconds. We said then that we have a bullish divergence, or what we understood as a buying signal, uh, when we saw prices posting lower lows and on contrary indicators showing higher lows, right? That is telling us the price is near the bottom and there will probably be a sign signal in the short term. On the contrary, we say that we have a bearish divergence or a sign signal when price posts higher highs and indicators lows lower highs. Indicators start to exhaust before the price action and we are probably approaching to a top, right? Mm -hmm. These divergences can also be named as positive divergences. These are the ones that occur when the price of the pair and the study makes a new low or the indicator starts to clean upward, right? It's another way to say, of saying the same. And we have a negative divergence that that, we, that is when the price makes a new high by the indicator fades to the same and is set close as lower than the previous high, okay? Despite we can read divergences in almost any technical indicators, there are certain classic ones that traders use to attempt to detect these divergences to confirm either we are seeing a probable reversal or if we are going to see a trend continuation. The most common ones are MACD, momentum, the stochastic oscillator, and the relative strength index. Okay? Keep in mind that as always when coming to technical analysis and technical indicators, Bigger time frames, the charts or above, will tend to be more affecting than smaller one, meaning one hour or less. Okay? Anyway, and what coming to divergences, I believe that the most important classification we need to see is this one, the one that divides divergences in between regular divergences and heightened divergences, right? So we understood as regular divergences. When price shows higher highs, we are going to see a chart right now, okay? Uh, and indicators shows lower highs. Bearish divergences as price rises, yet market seems to be losing the bullish trend. And on contrary, uh, or another case of regular divergence, sorry, is when we see price printing lower lows while indicators show higher lows, right? Price is falling. Yet bearish trend seems to be fading. These regular divergences are the ones that are understood as trend reversal signs in the market, right? We are going to see a couple of examples in the Japanese trend, for example, NIA, right? Where we have in the early charts lower lows when the indicators that active in this particular case continues printing higher highs in the same uh during the same period. Of course, keep in mind that when we are going to compare a divergence Right? We cannot start uh, analyzing price action in here, right, and the indicator in more. They must start in the same part, okay? Uh, a 
as you can see in this hourly chart, right, of dollar Japanese yen, the trend is clearly bearish, the plus seven trend, right? And if we take a look at the minimum of the market, right, and the minimum of indicators, right, we are going to see the divergence starting to show us a probable trend reversal. One thing that I want to make clear right now, and we are going to talk a bit more uh, uh, in a couple of minutes, is the fact that the divergence, right, the technical divergence, is not a standalone signal, okay? When we saw a divergence in the market, it's not telling us the market. Uh, and it's not, it's not uh, a trading strategy that we can use by itself, right? We need to add a filter because that the price continues rising or the divergence is there is not just uh, enough to go against the trend, particularly when we come to the regular ones, the ones that we were talking about just now, that tend to be signals that go against the dominant trend, okay? That's why they should never be a standalone signal. Uh, on the other hand, we have what we call hidden divergences, right? These are the ones that keep us showing price, showing lower highs, but the indicator shows higher ones, right? The indicator rises and the price seems unable to continue, right? This is a bearish divergence that points for farther falls. And on the contrary, when indicators break lower lows, but price shows higher lows, right? This is a bullish divergence that points for farther gain, right? As I was saying, hiding divergences are usually understood as continuation time, as in fact they are telling us that the small price retracement we are seeing at the moment, right, is probably going to be short lived, and the pair will probably resume its dominant trend but rather sooner than later. Okay, give me a second. In this case, you have one of those hidden divergences in the price printing lower lows indicators heading higher, right? And still the price continues falling over the coming session. Okay? That high and divergence is telling us that the trend will probably continue. Okay? Uh, keep in mind that this high and divergences, right, as I was saying, tend to favor the dominant trend. Okay? So in that particular case, are the ones that usually are better for trading as this one favor the trend, right? And on the contrary, regular ones imply going against the trend. So to be able to take a decision of going to go against against dominant trend, uh it's a bit harder to detect. We are going to see practical examples of this right now, okay? That's why we need to add a filter I think can be considered some low market signals if I was one trick that we can use to determine if a certain regular divergence is closer to an end or not, and so determine if price is close to a reversal or not, is count the peaks or valleys in between the indicators and the price action movement. Okay? Uh, to confirm, uh, if you count the peaks or valleys in charts and you found that you have five ascendant minimums in price, for example, right, and five descendant ones in the indicator, we have a regular divergence of fine points that suggest the trend reversal is quite close. I would say that we need at least three regular divergence points to start considering the fact that we may be facing a trend reversal, right? I have uh, witnessed in the market uh, up to six point divergences, right, in the daily charts, and we are going to see an example of that. But as more peaks or valleys we have in the chart, more possibilities there are of a trend reversal. Less than three in a regular divergences, oh, less than three means not the good, not a good signal to go against the dominant trend, and there is a big possibility that the trend will continue rather than reverse at that point. Three, it's about to start considering the fact, and when we reach five points of buying or peaks, is the perfect moment to start considering or looking for a reversal uh, signal in the first market, right? Uh, the fact is that the, the necessity of hot filters comes from the fact that sometimes we need uh, rather to avoid unnecessary losses 
rather than win in the first market, right? Yeah, I don't know. If we will have buying signal coming from our trading system, right? Let's suppose we use another trading system that is not that that does not include technical divergences, right? So we see a buying signal, right? Yet the cross and the study is showing us bearish divergence, whether in the indicators, not the indicator we are whether in another indicator, in a filter indicator, right? Then it could be a good idea to discard the signal and look for a greater trading opportunity, right? On the other hand, another thing that I consider important uh, when trading or attempting to trade with divergences, right, is, is to combine them with other indicators. As with any trading strategy, we cannot base our trading decisions in just one tool, right? Uh, besides using support and resistance lines that may help us face our trading decisions, we can also try to use momentum indicators such as the ADX. I rather use ADX than momentum because it will give me more reliable information about how strong or how weak the trend we are watching at the particular moment it is. Okay, here we are with the dollar Aussie daily chart. I choose particularly this cross over the, over the actuality because we have been seeing in this particular one uh, increasing bearish divergences in daily charts, right, since the uh, end of past year. And the fact is that despite all the bearish divergences we are seeing, and I marked just one year, the price continued rising to 1.10, right? If we take a look in here, that's one I show you, and one that has six peaks, one, two, three, four, five, six peaks, right? And the fact is that the, despite if it has six peaks, the retracement in the cross, which was a great important what to have a pips or so in the middle, the fact is that it has not been a trend change, right? If you take a look at more actual information, okay, keep watch here how the indicator, the momentum indicator, I don't want to to drive you DC with too many lines, right? But see in this particular case, right? How the indicator continues posting lower lows, but a uh, lower high, sorry, but the price action continues posting higher highs, right? And despite that, and even despite the selling signal in the daily chart in the middle, the pair has not yet given up on that long term bullish trend, right? That's why it's so important to filter. Anyway, and coming back to this particular first example that I will have marked, right? Keep in mind that trading a, a regular divergence is trying against the market. Against the market. That's why I consider it so important to add a filter, right? First of all, the first filter I will try to use, right, is a trend line as acting as support or resistance level. In this particular case. We are going to talk about a support line, okay? Uh, if you see the trend line has one, two, three, four points, uh, acting, uh, four points of the base, right? Until the price finally breaks lower. If we see the moment the price finally breaks lower, right? That's the moment when I would consider getting into this market or into this pair in a selling position. Still, I will be keeping in mind that when I trade a regular division, I'm against the dominant trade, okay? When I leave the trade, when the momentum indicator starts gaining the upside, again, okay? If I'm following the signals, I'm following in this particular case the momentum as the indicator that has given me the, the divergence sign, right? As long as the indicator keeps pushing lower, right, I will be fine inside my trend. But if the indicator starts regaining the upside, no matter what level, that could be a sign that the corrective movement that I'm trading is already over and the price may resume its bullish trend. So I would say that in this particular first small value that we are seeing in the momentum, right, when the price reached that level and starts moving back higher, that is the time when you will like to profit from a divergent signal, a regular one, Okay, rather than wait into the market to see what ha what happens, is that having sold around 98.70, the pair rose to 110 in the coming 12 months without never turning back. Okay, if you take a look at the chart, 
we have never reached this area again since that time of, uh, of the 2009, right? So one first spiritual could be a trend. Right? I use also static support and resistance areas determined by previous high lows in the daily chart or in the weekly chart. It will depend on the chart you are trading. If you're trading the daily chart, the best way to determine static support and resistance area will be to draw right horizontal level, right, where you see congestion of several maximums and minimums, either in the daily or in the weekly chart. Always move one chart above, right? Also, don't look at the current screen. Go back, right? We need to scroll back at least two or three screens to determine if that level has act as support or resistance level in the past. In this particular case of the OC, it's pretty hard because the pair has not been around this level for a long, long time. So we have to scroll back a lot before finding the pair in parity. But that will be also a good step. Support or resistance break level to confirm either if we are ready to go against the trend or not. Anyway, I will remove the this particular one and we'll go back to the bottom. And I will let you I will tell you right now also that the fact is that we are not always talking about trends, right? We are not always talking about trends. In this particular case, we have almost an horizontal line in here, no much of an inclination, right? Well the indicator keeps going lower. In those cases, we understand that also as a technical division. However, the fact is that the price being flat and consolidating, okay, just telling us that the divergence is less valid than the regular one when we have a strong rises like in this particular case, right? Anyway, um, one more thing I would like to share with you before we can start with questions, right? Um, sorry, that's not the chart. This is it. Okay. Is a trading short-term strategy with MACD and 34 period simple moving average, okay? Uh, let me add a moving average. I choose euro dollar, okay? Sorry. I choose euro dollar, okay, in the yearly chart because I believe it's quite, quite reliable for this particular quote, okay? It's just a 34 period simple moving average combined with MACD indicator, right? Well, uh, I know that several traders, right, uh, always run first to the MACD to determine whether if we have a bullish or a bearish divergence. However, it's not among my favorite indicators, right? It's usually considered an indicator that lacks momentum, okay? That is uh, slow movement, slow to react in the market. That's why I do prefer to use it in short-term trading, like one hour or so, because I just slagging. It won't be so harmful in your, my overall trading. However, I found out that the 34 period simple moving average will act as a good filter in this particular case, right? So, to improve the quality of the signal of the MACD, we add a 34 period simple moving average, right? It's, uh, and this is, let me show you how this works, okay? Once a candle opens in the opposite side of the moving average, right, either above or below in a different particular case, I wait till the mark D crosses the zero mid line, okay? This particular one, right? So let's say that we are trading on uh, euro dollar. We have in this particular case in here, okay, we have the price breaking above the particular field in the moving average and the candle opening above. Right? However, MACD is not above zero. We need to wait to the MACD to cross, like in this particular case, okay? In here, right? We have a candle opening and the MACD finally above, is above zero, okay? In the same way, of course, both above to the upside or both below. If the candle opens below the 34th period, simple moving average, then the MACD should be coming upside down, right, and cross the zero line, okay? Magdi indicator the gray line, right? So, 
Once the kennel opens on the opposite direct side of the moving average, I wait till my feet crosses the zero level in the same way. It must be should like it cross slightly after the kennel opening, okay? As, uh, above or below the 34 period simple moving average. As it happens on the contrary, right, will create a false indication of the price trend or trap you in a sideways market. So keep that in mind. MACD should cross slightly after the channel opening of our below below the 34 cent period moving average. The stop uh, losses, of course, they always depend on the chart on the side, right? But for the euro dollar, well, I would recommend a stop of around 15, 20 pips plus press at the opposite side of the simple moving average, okay? So if I take a selling trade around this level, I will press place my, myself not, not more than 15 pips plus pass above the 20 cent moving average. The same in this particular case, right? We have candle opening and going to the upside. My MACD crosses slightly later. We have a small pullback that falls below the 20 moving average, less than 10 pips in fact, and finally the continuation rally, okay? So that is a common uh, up for euro dollar, not much more than that. If we are going to trade pairs more highly volatile, I would say like pound process against greenback or against the yen, then maybe you will like to widen a bit that stop loss to 30 pips or so. When Japanese yen against the greenback that barely moves 20 or 30 pips per for our channels lately, the fact is that. I will not recommend to use this kind of trading strategy, okay? We need volatility in a pair. We need an intraday range of minimum 100 pips to apply this trading strategy, right? Anyway, as I was saying, the stop should be 15 pips plus spread on the opposite side of the moving average, okay? If you are a conservative trader, I will say that average, your take profit will be of around 50 pips. So it's really interesting as the risk reward rate ratio is really high. Okay. Uh, keep in mind another thing that's really important, as always when trading with moving average. If the slope of the moving average continues going higher, right? This is something I have said so many times over all my webinars, but hope you remember that. If the moving average continues heading higher, right? Then you may like to use either a trading stop or adjust both your stop loss and your profit taking. As long as the moving average keeps gaining fall, then you are in the right side of the market. When the moving average starts losing slow, okay, then you will see that the price would probably start retracing you, so you will better, better be uh, outside the market then, right? Uh, as long as price extends also away from the moving average, right? See the distance in between price and moving average in a year or in a year, right? As long as we are far away and the distance in between price and the moving average keeps widening, then you are in the right side of the market. On the contrary, when the distance between price around here, this zone, and the moving average starts shrinking, right? then that's another good sign that you may be better out by the market at the end point, okay? Is, uh, meaning, as long as they keep widening the distance in between price and the moving average, there's a good chance that the trend may continue to extend and you may profit a bit more. Uh, however, as I told you, for conservative, conservative traders, 50 pips on average seems pretty good for this trading strategy in the early chart, okay? There's another thing you can do to improve your trading with this particular system. Of course, right now we have a flat and simple moving average market is almost done for today. Moving average turns flat. Filling up there is not going to be much more of a movement. But what you can do in this particular case is, right, is shift your moving average for five periods, okay? You did it and shift for five periods. Okay, that will be aiming to forecast, right, where that moving average will be over the next five candles, right? Uh, in this particular case, it's flat, but if we add a bit more movement, then 
it will tell you it is a trend will be probably getting higher uh, the price is far away or not if the distance is shrinking widening and could what could happen in uh, the upcoming candles right uh, a trailing stop just above or below this price could be also a good uh, trading strategy to attempt to profit a bit more okay uh, Keep in mind that if you are using this trading strategy, see how it's shifting and it's turning slightly lower, right? In this case, we did not have a buy signal, but let's say that we get into the market because we have one, right? In this case, you see how it moves the price, the shifting, right? It was, if we were bullish in this particular case, on this moving average starts heading back south, there's a good chance that the pair would continue falling. And it will be better to go out of the market with growth. Okay? Uh, this uh, strategy that has been tested both for Euro and Swiss against Greenback, okay, with the classic 1226.9 MACD and the 34 period simple moving average in uh, a United Kingdom time zone meta trader. Keep in mind that you, if you are going to attempt to trade in another time zone, right, you better take a look at uh, at your own channels and perform your own back testing before trying to attempt trade for real with this strategy, okay? Um, as I said, it's always a good idea to do your own back testing before attempting to apply it. And just indicate your intervals to find the perfect alignment for other high volatile courses. Uh, you need to adjust both Right, the, the indicators. Okay, sometimes changing the numbers a bit, the moving average a bit shorter or a bit longer could favor the trading strategy, not only for different time zones but only also for different crosses. Okay, I would recommend a shorter moving average, maybe 21, which is also a Fibonacci number, for um, for high volatile crosses, and longer one maybe near 50. Right? For crosses that move a very short intraday trading range. Okay? In that case, I would say thanks all for being here. And see you back on Sunday with the market opening. Okay? Just at 1 GMT Monday morning. Okay? We are going to perform the live coverage of the market opening. Thanks all for being here. And see you on uh, Sunday night. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.